Hello, hello, more dimmers here and welcome to the fifth round of uh, Cairns Cup Tournament 2020. Uh, it's held in uh, St. Louis, Missouri, USA by St. Louis Chess Club. And um, it's the tournament for the strongest women in the world. At least we have uh, six out of ten top players in the world. So let's take a look. Uh, Juven Jean, actual um, world champion, uh, she defended the, the title just in January, not long time ago. We have also um, Hampi Koneru, uh, Katerina Lagno, Maria Muzyczuk, um, Harika Dronovali, Nana Zagnidze, Aleksandra Kosteniuk and also uh, Valentina Gunina and two players from USA, Irina Krusz and Karisa Yip. So... It's a really, really strong um, tournament for women. And uh, St. Louis Chess Club actually stated that um, it's the strongest women tournament ever held. And it's the second edition. And fifth round is known because that was really, you know, a bloodbath. All five games were decisive. So there were no draws at all. And I would like to show you one of the games from that round. So uh, we have Juven Jun, uh, actual world champion, uh, women world champion in chess, and she is 29 years old and her actual ranking 2583. And we also have uh, Katerina Lagno, uh, half Ukrainian, half Russian, but she play for Russia at this moment and her ranking is 2552 and she is 30 years old number five in the world at this moment so uh, juven jun play as black and lagno katerina play as white so let's see what happened in the game lagno opens with e4 we have c5 sicilian defense knight f3 knight c6 and c3 uh, here we have d5, e takes on d5, and queen takes on d5. d4 by Lagno, and bishop g4 by Juven Jun. And now it's the threat to, you know, double mess, mess up the pawn structure, double the pawns on the f file. So a bishop on e2 is played, c takes on d4, c takes on d4, and e6. Knight c3 attacking the Queen and bishop b4, so pinning the knight, and here we have a uh, castle unpinning the knight. So queen moved to a5 and now threatening the, to take the pawn uh, on c3. Uh, and here Lagno don't care about that pawn, so she play bishop on e3. And now here is the, the point. Normally, um, this pawn shouldn't be taken as it's you know poison pawn and uh, so it's interesting for the sicilian defense if you play sicilian defense to know that stuff uh, so believe me or not but the world champion play bishop on c3 b takes on c3 and queen takes on c3 uh, knight g7 could be you know um, recommended here or even knight f6 so developing first castle and and then the, you know continue the play the play but um juven jun just pick on c3 so we have d5 the best move in the position e takes on d5 and now watch at this this e file is just open so uh, now white has a um, you know big opportunity to actually strike uh, so how to do that Feel free to pause the video and uh, find a move which, you know, let you get advantage uh, against the world champion. Why I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready to beat the world champion? Okay, if you play bishop on d4 and attack the queen and g7 pawn then congratulations this is the best move in the position and actually uh, black are forced to play knight on d4 and after knight d4 bishop on e2 
now takes with queen on e2 with check. And now black has not much to play after um, knight on e7, of course, it's losing because knight f5 with the threat of checkmate, queen f6, but now we would have rook f on e1. So all black can do is, you know, uh, just queenside castle, but then easily queen e7, which doesn't look so great yet, but that's the best move in the position, queen f5. And now rook a on c1, king b8, and now rook c8 winning the game. Black can't, you know, um, stop the checkmating, as this is the these are the only moves which you know protect b7. So uh, would have to sacrifice the queen and of course lose the game. So knight e7 was impossible uh, in this position. Uh, king f8 would have to be played and after queen on e5 queen a3 controlling this diagonal so now um, the queen can't play on, on on here then knight f5 and black are very in very very big troubles as white can you know bring the rooks uh, to the game and you know strike very easily and black has you know still problems with developing uh, some pieces so uh, congratulations if you found this beautiful uh, bishop on d4 that was the move however katarina lagno play queen on d5 and here now we have knight g on e7 with tempo on the queen so queen moved to b5 and now uh, world champion just castle and stabilize the position now everything is fine with the position of black and uh, white actually takes on b7 equalize the material as well but now black gets the initiative so we have uh, rook f on b8 a queen had to move to a6 and rook b2 so now uh, black pieces are very active we have um, rook a on c1 attacking the queen and also uh, you know x-raying the queen so now the the knight can be taken so queen has to move to f6 uh, bringing the defender to um, c6 and here we have rook f on e1 h6 so making a space for breathing space for uh, the black king and here we have a3 um, so moving from the the harm way uh, if black want to uh, take on a2 now uh, it's impossible and of course white want to move the queen uh, from almost the corner so uh, rook a on b8 and here we have h3 kicking the bishop bishop c8 with tempo queen c4 queen a5 probably would be better here but we have queen on c4 and bishop on e6 still harassing the queen and queen c5 for now the queen found some um, you know place to stay uh, but here um, Juvenju decided to uh, make some tactics so she pick up on h3 g takes on h3 and now rook takes on e2 so um it's the exchange sacrifice rook takes on e2 and queen takes on f3 so uh what black just got okay black are um up the pawn but uh, exchange down but the white structure pawn structure is um, vulnerable now and white gonna have the problems to to defend so uh, rook e to c2 uh, so now black can grab another pawn on h3 and here we have queen on d6 uh, queen on d6 with the threat of course picking up the knight so we have rook on d8 first harassing the queen queen g3 so um, uh, knights are still under attack and black don't want to exchange the queen so queen on e6 uh, rook c5 and knight on d4 uh, so now there are some uh, very very nasty threat this is of course a family fork and bishop takes on d4 rook takes on d4 uh, so now we have another threat here and you know pinning the queen so we have rook on e5 
five first. Queen d7. So uh, this this thread is still um, possible. So we have queen on f3. Knight g6 attacking the rook. Rook e3 and now rook g4 with check anyway. King f1. And here we have queen on b5. Probably queen e2 would be the best here. Um, and black would have to find a way how to end the game. So after queen on e2, if they play queen on h5, you know, trying to, you know, attack on the h file, then just simply queen on f3. Uh, if queen on b5 and trying other way, for example, queen on g5, then we could play king on e1. Uh, black, of course, still better in that position, uh, but, but have to prove that, uh, you know, they have plan to play. However, we have uh, queen e1 immediately, and um, that's actually um, not really great. Now black can occupy the first um, rank, so we have rook on g1 check, king on d2, and queen b2 check. And here we have rook on c2, as rook is under attack, so rook on c2, the only move, and queen d4 check. A rook d3, and now queen a1, threatening checkmate now. Uh, so here we have rook on e3, making a space for the, uh, for the king, but also, uh, you know, making the wall on the, on the first rank. So now uh, white actually controls all the squares on the rank, so king is quite safe here. So we have rook on f1, and here rook on e8 with check, king h7, and now it's possible actually to play rook on e4, which is very important move. Now this rook actually controls important square on f4, uh, and you will see later why it's um, why it's important. F6 by Juven Jun, and here Queen F5 threatening to, uh, you know, uh, take the pin knight for free with check. So very dangerous. Rook G1, and here Queen F3 should be played. So just White should stay in that position. So after Rook F1, Queen F5, Rook G1, Queen F3, and just stay and try to, you know, get the uh, threefold repetition. If Knight E5, then still Queen F5, Knight G6, and Queen F3, that would be possible. Of course, Black would have to play somehow around, but um, this Queen actually threatens to take the, the Knight, but also defending A3. However, in this position, in this position, uh, Katarina Lagno play rook on e3. So everything looks uh, pretty okay um, because now this rook defend a3. So uh, it, it's it's all good, and also the knight is pinned now. So it looks much better than um, than you know defending uh, this way. Uh, but there is one big difference and actually um, feel free to pause the video and find the winning combination for black and it's very nice tactic so if you like to you know solve the puzzles solve the tactics then uh, feel free to do it as I enjoy my cup of tea okay ready so what what's the difference now uh, first of all, this rook, as I told you, protected f4, but now, of course, f4 is protected by the queen, so there is no a problem. Uh, but there is another problem. If queen is on f3, then actually, as I told you, it controls d1. And here is the tactic. So rook on d1 check, that's the first move of, of the tactic. And uh, here king e2, that was played in the game. And here the move which you have to find is rook on d5, bang. And this is so powerful move. First, we have threat to checkmate the king. So that's the first thing. And the second, of course, the queen is under attack. And 
if white actually want to take the rook, which is probably the only move, uh, then we have knight f4 with check. And after king d2, of course, uh, queen is gone. So this is why Katerina Lagno actually resigned the game. So a uh, very beautiful tactic at the end and, um, and very dramatic game where Katerina Lagno had a very big opportunity. Kaisa gave her opportunity actually to win against the actual world champion woman world champion but she didn't find the the you know right continuation and she lost at the end so yeah i'm gonna cover more games of cairns cup as they look like you know very decisive more attractive and not so many draws so um so, so it's it's probably more enjoyable as well and, uh, and yeah, if you like this video, just press like. And if you don't like for some reason, press unlike and comment which game of the Cairns Cup you would like to see uh, in incoming days. We have already, we're gonna have a sixth round today. So um, yeah, if you don't want to miss any, just click subscribe and of course uh, press the bell button. And, uh, and yeah, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.